This is the Oklahoma Talking Company. Welcome to Activate Your Strengths with Rhonda Boyle. StrengthsFinder 2.0 is an analytical assessment created by Gallup Corporation, and many people today are using it to change their lives, improve their relationships, and enhance their work experience. This is the podcast where we explore using your natural talents and gifts in your personal and professional development. And now, here's your host, Rhonda Boyle. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. This is Rhonda Boyle here, and welcome to the Activate Your Strengths show, where we talk about all things Strengths Finder. And I am doing a little fist pump over here on the other side of your earbuds, because I cannot wait to introduce you to my guest today. He has a, a Navy career as a corpsman and longtime history as a police officer, both in New Orleans and Oklahoma City now. And he actually came to Oklahoma City after Hurricane Katrina. And now he is also the lead guitar in a fabulous jazz blues band called On a Whim, of which I am a great fan. Married to Janelle with three kids, David, Maya, and Victor. And I'd like to welcome you, Mr. David Randall. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Good morning. I'm glad to have you. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, we always like to start off here with asking what your top five are, your talents. Well, my top fives are number one, adaptability, positivity, achiever, maximizer, and intellection. Awesome. So just to let everybody know in our audience, StrengthsFinder identifies 34 talents and they give you, uh, when you go and take the test, they give you your top five in dominance if you, you know, open up your top five. And so that's what we have here. Your top five are adaptability, positivity, achiever, maximizer, and intellection. So here's the first question of the day. What was your aha? Well, I, I really have to say... Um taking a test I, I was I was like they, they got me wrong they pegged me wrong it, it's it's baloney this is another money scheme yeah. <laughs> um, but as I went through the training and then I realized that everything I've done led me to this point to where you couldn't help but say you know well you ask yourself why'd you do this why'd you do that and then you go through the training and it's like a light bulb comes on and yeah. you can't help but be like that's why. That's, that's why, why I did that. You know, it's like, that's why I was a corpsman. That's why I'm a police officer. That's why I just like to help. It's like, aha. Sure. Right. I think you said that it was before that, it was like you lived 43 years living Without with a stranger. Knowing, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I stand by that no matter what. It's It's like when I started the training, I was like, there's nothing these people could tell me that I don't know about myself. Mm-hmm. I've been there. I lived it. And uh, when I started going through the training, it was like, who, who was who is this person? You know, <laughs> right. and that's what I have to say. I, I've lived 43 years with somebody that I thought I knew. And now all of a sudden you had words to who you really are. And they made Absolutely. sense after time. Absolutely. But it took you a few minutes. I think you, the yes. word you actually used, you said it was a bunch of baloney, <laughs> we'll say, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about your adaptability, because that's a, a talent that means you bend and flex and and oh, you just don't get mm-hmm. frustrated by change and you, you really you transition to, change. You, you, have to, you have to be fluid in everything you do. Mm-hmm. Um, That's when I started to realize in my profession that nothing is routine, you know, no matter what it is, music, law enforcement, whatever. You have to be fluid with anything that comes at you. Um, If it's a musician, somebody happen to go to a change earlier than anticipated or, you know, a wrong that wrong note. You know, you don't just stop and be like, oh, God, you know, you have to adapt to it. You have to be fluid with it. You have to be a willing participant in everything that comes along. Right, right. And I think uh, you mentioned unforeseen detours as a police officer. Oh, yes. I mean, when you start your shift, y- you never know what to expect. Right. Never know. You don't especially, know what kind of call you're going to go on. Especially and- when it's a full moon. <laughs> you never know what to expect. <laughs> so you have to be especially adaptable on a full moon. Is that Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, that's fun. That's good. And, and uh, I know that as a musician, you have 
gosh, how big is your band? You have like we have, we have five, six members. I'm sorry, six, six members. members, and so you are having to bend and flex and and pay attention to a lot of different things. Absolutely. So it's really good that you have that talent, that adaptability. It comes in handy. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your positivity for a minute, because, you know, as a police officer, and especially uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were in New Orleans still right after Hurricane Katrina. So there was a lot of chaos and just a lot going on. How do you stay positive or how did you feed into people, I guess? Because, well, being a police officer in general, you have the tendency to see the best in people mm-hmm. and see the worst in people. And during that time, during uh, Katrina, you couldn't help but see it wasn't it wasn't about the people so much because the worst was just given to you. Mm-hmm. And you seen people hit rock bottom. And one thing that kind of carried me through was I'm a musician. I've been a musician since I was four. And that was always, I called it my stress reliever. Mm-hmm. So while I had my patrol car, besides my equipment for work, I had my guitars in the back seat. I, I, I said a prayer, I said, Lord, you can have everything else, just give me what I have right here and I can, I can push through. So during that time, working 18 to 20 hour days, uh, when I finally got back to my office, because that's where I was living for a few months, um, I had to take my guitar out and just strum a few chords just to de-stress myself. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I started to notice that while I would take a few moments just to play, I would see one person come sit in, then two people come sit in, then it was more they would ask me to go to the conference room and just play there so they can just just release. They can just talk about the day's activity, whether they cried, whether you know they just talked or, or whatever it was. And so that kind of pushed me through just knowing that, you know, I, I can get this off or whenever you help somebody, you know, during that time, they have absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you if it's giving them food or finding some type of shelter or somewhere they can go to see that they're looking at you like, thank you, you know, you've helped me. And to see that smile, it rejuvenates me as I go along. Yes, yes. So you were able to use your music to actually help other people transition through the chaos that they were going through. Yes, ma'am. So um, in your other work as, you know, just your day-to-day duties as a police officer, how do you lift people up? Because that's really what your job is. Your mission in life is a- to absolutely, bring positivity into the world. Absolutely, you're there at their most trying times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether it's you, you try to give them a smile or try to find that, that positive spin on whatever it is that they're going through to just you know, show them that this is not the end. You know, there is an answer. And just to see their reactions to, you know, when they feel so helpless that somebody Mm -hmm. is actually there caring, not just to whisk them away to jail or because I've been known to take people to jail with a smile on their face. (laughs) I I don't know if uh, I'd ever go to jail with a smile on my face, David. It it, it has happened more than (laughs) once. but, um, But just to let people know that this is not the end. You sure. Know, um, there's other other avenues that that you know you can help them try to find because yeah, essentially, people get lost. Right, right. And you bring them hope. Yes, ma'am. With your positivity, you lift up their spirits. Now, you said that you uh, you have to you know use your music or you're using your music to stay positive yourself. So after a hard day at work. Is that what you do? You use your music? What else do you use to stay positive? The initial (laughs) reason is when I come home, I have my family right there. Mm -hmm. And they can automatically tell what kind of day I've had. And they won't let me, you know, slip into that that pit. They they will not let me, Um, especially my kids. They... They know, they sense it, and then here they come, either with a hug or, you know, a funny joke or, or right. something, but they will not let me let me go down. They, they always keep me up. And then, of course, yeah, there, there's my music. Sure. That, um, and especially 
you get the both combined when you have your music and you're teaching your kids music. Hey, that's that's a twofer. There that's, you that's go. A good one. Yeah. There you go. It's really important for people with positivity to understand that they have to. Yes, their job is to lift the spirits of other people, but by the same token, they need their own spirits Absolutely. lifted. So they have to put in some type of process, or they have to have some way of being uplifted themselves because that's where they get the energy in order to uplift other people. Yes, ma'am. So uh, a person with positivity can go way negative if they're around negative situations a lot if they don't have that. Almost like a sponge. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. They do soak up the energy of people that are around them. Now, your number three talent here is Dum-dum. achiever. You are a super achiever, very goal oriented. You like to accomplish things. I have my list. You have your little <laughs> lists, right? And I think yes, you ma'am. told me too that you use post-it notes a lot. Yes, yes, I do. If if you come to the office, they're they're everywhere. Yeah. Because uh, I I have to write it down, um, or else it's in oblivion. And uh, well, you didn't before, yeah, right? There were no, times where you no, didn't, didn't write things down. I didn't write it down, and somebody would come. Did you ever finish this? And I was like thinking in my head, where is that on the list? You know, sure. But, um, but yeah, now I, I write it down. Um, I even have one thing when I get up in the morning that my daughter wrote, you know, and I have it right on side the mirror just to remind me that, you know, hey, you know, somebody loves me. So, you know, I, I have all my little uh, schedules and, and lists written down and I mark sure. them off one by one. Sure. So every day, um, how does your day start? Do you, I think you mentioned to me that your day starts at zero. So do you make every, your first list every day? Every day is a new day. When you get up, you know, you try to think, OK, what do I need to accomplish today? Mm-hmm. And the list just automatically begins when you turn off that alarm and you sit up and your mind's going, OK, what do I need to do? And yeah, the list starts right there. Sure. Now, oftentimes, those of you who are achiever, you have people add things to your <gasps> list yeah, throughout the day. Unexpe- unexpected additions. <laughs> Does that mess your list up or what What do you do in those cases? That's that's when you try to scramble to see, OK, where can I put it on this list? And, you know, you try to prioritize, OK, how do I need to do this? Sometimes, yeah, unfortunately, it goes back to the end of the list because I have my priorities that I have to do also. But sometimes it goes hand in hand with something else I'm doing. So I can kind of slide a subsection right under where I'm going. So, right. you know, it, it works from time to time. Sure. Mostly. Now, do you have long term lists or are they just pretty much every day? Are there things you want to accomplish that you keep There's, a list of? There is my long term that mostly I keep in the back of my mind because I know the short terms are steps towards the long term. So, um, so yeah, that one I mostly keep, or I'll write it down and just have it on the side. And but the short term is is the more more pressing ones at the time. Sure, those are the ones you have to get after. Yes, and, and got to get and, those done now. Yes, <laughs> like an Energizer Bunny or something, right? Yes. Is there a um, do you feel something physically inside to get those things done? Well, whenever I get my list, it's it's like I become this relentless, you know, um, object that you're not going to stop this jargon out. I'm, I'm running for it. I, I, got, mm-hmm. I have to go full bore at it. Um, there's no half stepping with it. You, you have to get it done. Um, if I can't complete a list, if I can't get something done, I'm, I'm incomplete. And I don't like that feeling. Is that like at the end of the day when you don't have something checked off, what happens? Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's a sleepless night. I'm trying to see how, is there a way that I can, you know, kind of still complete it, you know, without starting a new list all over again. It's uh, it's an uneasy feeling for me sure. you know, not to have something, you know, completed that I set my mind out to. Mm-hmm. I think most achievers are like that. They feel that they must accomplish, you know, certain things. And right. a lot of achievers are um, accused of being type A personalities. And <laughs> and they're told that uh, they're all work and no play. And you obviously absolutely. play with your music. Oh, absolutely. And, <laughs> but you yeah. have that. Have people said that to you, you know? Yes. Yes, I, I have. Um, they, when I'm at work and I'm at work, um, I guess they're trying to figure out, do you do anything besides work? Yes. You know, is there anything else <laughs> exactly. you like to do? And when I open up and say, you know, yeah, the musician aspect of something, they're looking like I, I would never thought. Mm-hmm. I don't know how musicians are supposed to look, but, you know, um, yeah, they 
they have to like I got to see it for myself. You know, sure. I, I don't think because all I see is a cop. You know, right. So. Uh, my husband happens to have Achiever in his top five, and he achieves things even on the weekends. You know, like his laundry is done <laughs> a certain way, and he, yes. and everything you can tell, he's checking off things off of, of his list. And so, you know, recognizing that he has to get these things done because there, it's something about him. It doesn't say it's nothing about me. It's about him. He really feels that drive and that need to. Uh, that internal drive to get things done. Yes, ma'am. And so even on vacations. <laughs> There's things that has to be done. <laughs> That's right. I think we might need a vacation, you know, from coming back from a vacation with yes. achievers. Because yes. you guys have your agenda and you want to get it, it done. So, well, let's talk about your maximizer for a minute. Uh, maximizer is that talent that aims for perfection. You have a standard of excellence and you just can't stand mediocrity. There is not a number two. There, uh, I have to be number one. There's, there's excellence. That's just plain and simple. I have sure. to be. Um, but you're not competing against anyone else it's like, a, myself. like competition would be. It's just myself. Mm -hmm. um, I know what I can, I can do, and I won't settle for anything less than what I can do. Um, I can look at things around, and it's just... I have to strive for it. I, I can't. I can't slack at it. I can't. You know. I have to use everything at my disposal to make sure I get this job done the best possible way. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't want to be good at something. I want to be the master of it. I want. I. I have to. I have to do it better than I did before. Sure. Every time I I, I try something, if I go that day and I'm on patrol, so to speak, and I'm doing something there's a better way that it, it can be done than I did it before. Mm -hmm. You're always looking for that best and always. highest quality. Always. So you mentioned to me uh, when we talked earlier that you, you know, because of you were younger and finances, of course, you started with these smaller guitars. Oh, yeah. Or I don't know how to phrase that, I would but say the, the lower level. Less, the, the less expensive ones. <laughs> and um, right. and I, I played them until... I, if they could speak, they'll probably be like, you know what, you have to go with somebody else because I I've, I've can't give you no, I, I can't give any more. Right. And so then, yeah, that's when you I would go to. You wore them out. Is that what you're telling yes, us? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I would go to the music store and, you know, start looking at the upper shelves or the ones behind the glass. And it was like, I wonder. So, you know, yes, I, I, I splurged on a couple mm -hmm. and got them and be like, well, they do feel different. So then I have to, you know, explore what exactly can I do with this one now? Sure. You know? So, um, and now you have a new standard in instruments. Ooh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. And and whenever my wife finds the receipts, I, I don't know if I'll be playing them. <laughs> <laughs> you might get into a little trouble. Yes. Yeah. So let me just remind everyone that uh, this is the Activate Your Strengths show, and we are here to talk about Strengths Finder 2.0, which is a, an assessment developed and created by Gallup Corporation. It's been around for a long time, over 50 years. And and we use it in our work to help people make personal transformation and uh, change their lives, really, by understanding themselves, understanding what the needs are, their needs are, and then uh, making changes around that. So uh, you can find that test at www.gallopstrengthscenter.com. And for $9.99, you too can find your top five out of 34 talent themes to find out how you work in in your most uh, your strongest uh, position. So anyway, back to Mr. David Randall here, my guest. And uh, you mentioned, too, I want to go back to your maximizer for a minute. Um, you happen to also know all 34 of your talents and your number six sits at belief your is belief and you said uh when we were talking earlier you said that you really felt that you're in your music especially that it was your job in life to give back yes. the highest and the best yes i i have a symbol that um that i thought of thought i was original with it thought of <laughs> long long time ago and it was a, a heart with wings mm -hmm. i have a tattoo of it when i went and did my first professional recording um, and it has desire on it. Um, I was always taught by my dad, who was a musician also, that God's, God has given you this gift. It's just, just 
what he one of the things he, he's given you. And a lot of people go to church, you know, they pay their tithes, you know, pay whatever offerings they can and which is fine and dandy. But one of the best things I felt I can give back was the music that he has blessed me to do. And so I had this this symbol and now the symbol is on my guitars, it's on my picks, it's on things I I I'll, I'll inadvertently draw it on something as I'm writing a list. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll draw it down. And when I play, play my music, I call it mood music because I'm offering my gift back up to God and I'm I'm also offering it to whoever listens to it because I want to I want to make something that when you listen to it you think you think of a certain point in time. You think of something where you could sit down and you remember that, and you know you just take this journey with me. And that's one of my my true beliefs that this is one of the reasons why I'm here is not only to offer my gift back to God, but I'm giving something to you to hopefully spark a thought, a memory, you know, uh, a happier time, mm-hmm. and inspire others to be their best yes, selves. Ma'am. That's what I hear uh, out of that. So uh, you also have the talent of intellection. Yes. So those of you with intellection, you think and you think and you think Constantly and thinking. you think. And you're even in fact, you're probably thinking about something right now while we're sitting here talking. You've got a, a track back here running with some thoughts. A theme song right here. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking of a new theme song. Yeah, that's how uh, intellection is. So, do you have trouble turning those thoughts off? Uh, every day, mm-hmm. every day. You know, I'm I'm told uh, when I go into my special room at the house that uh, you know I may have to come down and join the family from time to time because <laughs> I, I need that moment. I, I need to reflect. I need to to try to map out what's going on in my mind mm-hmm. because I'm thinking about not only music, but I'm thinking about you know the next day. I'm thinking about things that I know are coming up and just different scenarios on how can I, what type of resolutions I can have, right. you know, to, to make it through those. Sure. Well, and the important thing about intellection and for you to understand is that you have a need to be alone. Yes. And oftentimes people with intellection are accused of being aloof or loners, lone wolf. You might hear some of those terms. And the reality is, is that you need to respect yourself and respect and create and develop those those times for yourself where you can be alone because it's important. That's exactly how you recharge your batteries. Absolutely. So uh, you also said to me that when you uh, when we were talking earlier that your music is thinking in an audible manner. Yes, it is. So in some sense, you're thinking out loud through the notes it's that great you play. Song. Great song. <laughs> thinking <laughs> but, uh, out loud. Yeah, yes. we may have to compose something here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, um, I was I was told a phrase a long time ago that you know. Sometimes when words fail, music prevails. Mm-hmm. And everybody has that moment to where you may not have the exact words that you want to say or um, the phrase, that catchy phrase that, you know, you think of at the time. But when I'm playing music, it's like my thoughts are just and when I go play music, I may not have a single idea where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I'm when I'm alone, I'll just pick up whatever instrument may it be a guitar, you know, uh, bass or, or keyboards, and I'll just let my heart do it. And I may come up with a progression, and uh, I quickly have to write it down. But um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll think of something, and I'll just I'll just let it go. Sure. And uh, yeah. as as that day goes, uh, I and that's another thing I, I can't just let. If it's music, I can't let that song go. Like get a part of it and let it go. I have to finish the whole thing that at that time. Right. Right. I have to do it. I have to get that whole thought out. Now, do you have a partner in your your when you're out in your police officer role? Do, are you by yourself? Um, mostly, I'm by myself. So you get lots and lots of thinking yes. time there too. Yes, and that's the interesting thing about these talents is that they they are all over your life. You find them at home. You find ways to you know use your intellection at work. You're using your intellection in your music. And uh, we can also clearly see, for example, in your music that 
you know, your um, intellection shows up, your maximizer shows up, you have songs you want to achieve and certain things you want to accomplish with your music. And then you're very adaptable with your music and uh, you use it to bring smiles and make people happy and comfortable or reflect and so forth. So you can uh, we like to take the talents and separate them uh, just so we can learn about them. But the reality is you're always They're using them together. They are. They're definitely intertwined and you can't get away from them, you know, and they all influence one another as well. Now, one more thing I wanted to ask you about is that you, um, your talents and the way you, in your top five, you are what we would consider a nurturer or a relationship <laughs> builder. And yes. when you found that out, you were not happy. No, no. Um I like to think of myself as a manly man, and you know, and nurturer <laughs> yes. was not one of the words I, I would use. And during some of the deeper training, um, and I learned that I was a nurturer. I I fought it tooth and nail. No, you, y'all are making big mistakes. And then you reflect on everything you've done in life, and in my life, uh, you got to think being in a medical profession. You know, you're helping people. You're trying to nurture them back to health. When I became a police officer, you know, I'm helping people in their most trying times. Yes. Um, Musician, I like to think I'm helping people get through whatever it is they had during the day by Mm -hmm. letting them have, if, if anything else, a temporary release from what they're going through. So when I thought about that and I was in this group full of women and I'm sitting there like (laughs) I'm in the wrong group. But when I thought about it, it was like the light came on. Sure. I was like, okay, now I understand. Now I understand. That was one of the biggest ah ahas. And till this day, things happen and I'm still having aha moments because of the way things fall. And it's like, I understand. I understand now. Mm-hmm. And this is what happens when you have the take take advantage of the opportunities to do the deeper work is Absolutely. you get to learn these deeper things about yourself, like what you need, because every one of these talents has a specific need. Yes. Like I mentioned, the need to be alone with your intellection and so forth. And so um, I think that that's a, a beautiful thing that you've taken the time to dig deep and really uh, take advantage of uh, applying, learning uh, the opportunities to learn how to apply these talents in your life to make changes. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you made a huge change by going back to your music yes. in public. You had been some time outside I think the I've um, had it in the box yeah you Uh, told me that you had buried yourself yes I buried it because um I was told by outside sources oh it's it's, that's a hobby it's a good hobby Mm -hmm. and I never thought that it would have the opportunity to support or do anything greater but be a hobby and so with my job it was like I have to pay the bills you know and from learning from yeah your parents or everybody else, you know, at first nobody makes millions, you know, playing a gig here, playing a gig there. Sure. But your heart wants what your heart wants. Mm -hmm. And when you finally learn what makes you you and what makes you happy, you can't have it in the box. You can't, you have to open that box and you let, you let you be you. And I, I told you then, and I still say thank you to this day that you helped me find somebody I thought I lost a long time ago. And um, and now that I have my music and I can kind of almost put it in the forefront now, and I'm still pushing, you know, to make it the forefront that, um, that yes, it's this is what makes me the happiest. This is what makes David who David is. Sure. Well, we're. I'm just delighted. It's been wonderful to see your growth and and to. Uh, I'm thrilled to support your band because you play my favorite kind of music, <laughs> which is jazz and blues. And so, tell us um, one last thing: where we can find you, how how we can get in touch with you. If anybody in our audience wants to hear you play, where are you guys going going to be? On a whim. Um, on a whim. September fourth, we'll be at Water's Edge Winery, yes. uh, starting at seven o'clock. Um, you can look up On a Whim Band on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, YouTube. We have several videos and audio that you can listen to. 
You guys are awesome, really, really awesome. So I'm just so glad that you have gotten involved in our community with Activate Your Strengths. And to find more about us, you can find us at www.activateyourstrengths.com. We also have a fan page on Facebook, Activate Your Strengths. We are Activate Me on Periscope and Activate Strong on Twitter. And we, too, have a workshop. We do local workshops in Oklahoma City, and we have workshops, and we'll travel. We're working in uh, corporate arenas as well as personal transformation. We have a workshop coming up on the 28th of August. And then the intensive, our deeper work, will be on the 29th. So we would look forward to seeing people in Oklahoma City come out and see us. And that is our show for today. David, I just thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, thank, thank you, you for Jason, me. for being in the control room and working all those bells and whistles over there that I'm so glad I don't have to deal with. And with that, we are off today. Go and live in your strengths. Thanks for joining us. Activate Your Strengths with Rhonda Boyle is a presentation of Oklahoma Talking Company. Learn more and listen to other great programs at oklahomatalking.co. This has been a production of Destiny Creative.